same thing. Yeah, they're just they're, they're tricksy. They're just. They're just... <laughs> There's a very cool shot of the shark going uh, swimming, obviously, and then it goes through fire, and um, I just think that's very cool, and that's something you don't get in Jaws. Yeah. Sharks it gets, through fire. It gets turned away from fire most of the time. It's free, It doesn't go for fire. It kind of, it kind of does in this. I, I'm sure, like, the second shot of this chapter is gliding through, like, a hole, but there's, like, flame all around it. Yeah, that's when it's going it down into the stairwell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I was saying Jaws, right? Jaws, I, I've never, you're right, Jaws doesn't go through fire. No, it's, mm-hmm. it's an infinitely inferior film. We all agree. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jaws is my favorite film, but I think Deep Blue Sea is my favorite movie, if that makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. And, right. then, and then Jaws Revenge is my favorite That's, the, that's the bit that makes no sense. <laughs> it's your favorite piece of work of art of any of any medium. I, lo- I, I traced how far that shark swam and how long it took him. Like, that thing was like, it, it follows Monster. And it just... It set up a trap in the beginning, killed one of the Brodies. It did that, like, on purpose, I think. And then and then it's, oh, man, I just love how it pinballed all over the place and then ate the lady on the banana boat. <laughs> that shark has a great map because it gets, like, has to go all the way around America, like, <laughs> the Caribbean. It's, uh, it's got, yeah. It, knows it's, where it's it follows. It's a, it follows shark. I love it. I have a theory that they hired the family, the Jaws family, hired a private investigator. And uh, that's what this shark was to go after him. <laughs> it's the only way I can make sense of it all, other than the voodoo angle that got cut out. I still need to watch yours for one day. One day we'll cover it on her. No, but I, I don't know. It's got an amazing last line, hasn't it? Well, do you remember what the last line is? It's eluded me, but Michael Caine says something about nuns. I don't remember. Do you remember this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I remember go- the shark roaring and then gets sta- – the shark kind of stabs itself a little bit on the boat. Yeah, the, the, it... Michael Caine's final final line of dialogue of Jaws the Revenge is, when I get back, remind me to tell you about the time I took a hundred nuns to Nairobi. <laughs> I really <laughs> hope that's improvised. I want that story. Yeah. Jeez, that's a, that guy's had a rich life, Michael Caine, in that movie. <laughs> a lot of nuns. <laughs> a lot of nuns. To Nairobi. Oh, that's a, I mean, never mind. I, a, a number of nuns, I'd say. Just the, the amount of organization for all of that, too. That's a lot of a hot place to be yeah. wearing a habit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, I guess, I guess they're starting to realize the people because they never knew how smart these things are, right? So this kind of, this scene kind of marks a change in it. They're beginning to realize how smart these things are. Like at least Samuel Jackson's character. I mean, only before this point, only Susan and presumably Jim knew that these sharks were smarter than anything. Carter had his had his suspicions when he saw the sharks recognize guns and swim backwards and take out cameras because that's unusual shark behavior. But yeah, this is this is the proof. This is this is the point where Susan becomes the villain of the film, or you know, arguably the villain of the film. It's yeah. insane. It's crazy that these sharks. I mean, he's talking about battering those those steel doors down, but I guess. I mean, is the shark using a, ra- a battering ram? Is it using its... It's using Jim. It's, it's using Jim's gurney still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could run into a metal door and knock it open. I mean, the shark, is it just using its snout, its nose, to plow into this thing and knock open these doors? They can go backwards as well, remember? So maybe yeah. it's kind of backwards. I don't know. I mean... Well, the, the, the research I did when the test was being done, with the needle being pushed into the shark's brain, sharks apparently can't feel pain. Mm. So... Maybe it's it is ramming its nose into its snout into the door, and it's okay with that. Mm. It doesn't mind as long as its teeth still work. Potentially, I feel uh-huh. like there's probably a conversation at one point where they considered having the sharks open the doors, like the raptors in Jurassic Park, oh, hell like yes. with their yes. their mouth. Like I'm sure that conversation was had. What do you think is a better kitchen fight in this movie? LL versus the shark, or the kids in the kitchen versus the raptors? <laughs> they both involve someone going in an oven. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But only in one of them does uh, the villain turn the oven on. So I'm going to say this film. Yes. The shark turns I love it. I mean, you cannot overst- overstate that. And you're speaking from the perspective of a Jurassic expert, because you, of course, were in Jurassic World. <laughs> in is a, uh, a a flattering way of putting it. I, I'm visible for about half a second, like on a millimeter of the screen. But yeah, I have a tiny cameo uh, getting splashed by a mosasaur. There's a rich backstory in this, though. Thank you, the <laughs> People have yeah. really fleshed this character out. Yeah, I got, I did get a character named Edmund and, um, quite a, quite a tragic backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Living with my mom and not having a girlfriend. It's quite a depressing backstory. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that is true. So, I mean, um, you know, I love Jurassic Park and I, th- this film obviously has a ton of parallels with Jurassic Park 
hence some people calling it Jurassic Shark. Um, yes. But um, yeah, I love them both. I, I, I you know, I'm not going to choose. Wow. And I know this sounds crazy, but I keep drawing parallels between Deep Blue Sea and Jurassic World because they lie about the testing, and then you have the rakish animal rider who has the the scientist and all of that. So I, I, I kind of like that. It, it, it draws parallels to Jurassic Park, and then Jurassic World draws parallels to Deep Blue Sea, which makes me really happy. I dig it's, that. And it's that's interesting, because I was thinking, rewatching it tonight, who would play the um, the Thomas Jane role if it was made now? And I was thinking maybe cool. McConaughey, but Chris Pratt's a better call, I think. I, th- I can yeah. see Chris Pratt doing that, yeah. I think maybe Find he's too, too famous. I think Tom- Thomas Jane wasn't as well known as Chris Pratt is now. But if you're going for a massive budget Deep Blue Sea remake, then yeah, Chris Pratt, he could do worse. Uh, how would Edmund do in Deep Blue Sea? Oh, he would he would get eaten immediately. Yeah, he would he would get taken out by Stellan Skarsgård's body <laughs> as it swung from the helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> splashed in demeaning fashion, and then crushed. Um, it gets attached to the gurney by accident, like you clip yourself to it. And then yeah, you sort of hang. Oh, so yeah. you'd be the the helicopter operator, the winch yeah. operator. Yeah, okay. he's very much a Mr. Bean esque character, so <laughs> something very bad would befall him. But um, yeah. Yeah. Do you think this film would get remade? I mean, it's it's had a couple of sequels. I, M- Mark has seen the second one. I haven't seen either yet. So bad. But from what I've heard, Deep Blue Sea 3 isn't terrible. I mean, we will, we will find out eventually. So I think that it's it's in the popular mindset. It's in the conversation a little, a, a, more than it may have been this time last year. I mean, and of it's course it's podcasts. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> this could lead to it. Our mission is to get Deep Blue Sea an Oscar somehow. And I'll, I'll settle for a remake. We can do what, it. What, what's the Oscar for? Uh, all right, so <laughs> everything. <laughs> best nautical rap track. Yeah, that was. Whoa! Oh, it wasn't even nominated for best original song. That's a crime. It would have to be a lifetime achievement for Rennie Harlan. Or, or I don't know. We'd have to. We'd have <laughs> to get him back. I know he's making Skip Trace and movies like that overseas now, but it would have to be like an honorary Oscar or prove that Deep Blue Sea did something that influenced the filmmaking world now. So I can do it. 20, 2027, I'll get it. It's Oscar. Well, I think that Phil Collins has LL Cool J's Oscar, because you'll be in my heart from Tarzan won Best Original Song that year. Come on. And I like Phil Collins, but it's no LL Cool J. No. <laughs> I, I don't think that this would have beaten Blame Canada, which was also up, That's it should have been in the running. It's, it's just sad. I gotta say that the blue lighting in this clip, I, I like how they did that with, you know, the, you have the blue ocean kind of, they're trying to practically light what's in this place. You have the fire that's doing some of the light, the steam that's helping the, you know, the, the lighting situation and the blue. But Deep Blue Sea looks entirely like this shot just blue the entire time. So I don't know if you ever watch it, but it's, just, it's, it's really, there's a lot of blue gels in Deep Blue Sea. Well, they, they knew that one day I'd be on here trying to find the deepest, bluest scene in Deep Blue Sea, and they've made this scene as blue as possible, and I'm here for it, and I love it, and I'm grateful. Where's it at? Where's it at in rankings? It's, it's, it's both pretty deep and pretty blue, so it's up there. Uh, I, I need to update <laughs> my graph. But, <laughs> but yeah, the fact that all, all of the lighting is blue is helping a great deal. Yeah, so we have a thing where we're trying to figure out the the deepest, bluest scene in this so it's this normal, is five it's a, it's a normal regular thing to do i don't understand this is, I, no i admire that i admire that that's a fantastic objective um this, this one didn't strike me as being that blue to me personally <laughs> i don't know maybe you guys have a more scientific scale i just didn't think it was that blue well it's just the fact the fact the lighting is blue is is helping like it's yeah it, you this scene could have been lit differently so that nothing was blue but they just they they filmed the scene and thought no we can make this bluer and they just did. So that's that's all I'm great. It's not I don't think it's the bluest scene, but it's bluer than it could have been. It's yeah, a like strange it's conversation that we're having. Just how much steam there is constantly coming out of vents and I'm like, is that because the station is sort of imploding or is that just a regular corridor that you're walking down? <laughs> this is just the steam <laughs> this is the sauna. It's like quasar or some kind of crazy <laughs> laser quest type thing where they're just shooting dry ice at you. Just seems excessive. <laughs> I love excessive steam. It makes me happy. Like, does Alien have steam in it? That's a one, really random question. Aliens has a lot of steam towards the end, definitely. When she's um, when she's got the flamethrower and she's moving through, and they're just there is a lot of steam going everywhere. Did you guys ever do the Alien experience thing in the Trocadero? 
That was amazing. Uh-huh. So you basically run around and the guys in alien suits chase you. And I did it with a friend when I was like 12 and he lost his shoe doing it, which was quite traumatic for him. Um, but anyway, there was a lot of, there was a lot of steam going on there as well. But, um, cause I, I know Bernie Harlan loves those movies too. So maybe that was a nice callback. Yeah. Definitely. And William Sandow, the production designer, he also worked on Hocus Pocus. There's a ton of fog in that movie. So maybe that's just a theme that he does, right? I, I love how. Just listeners know exactly what films you've been watching recently, Mark, when they listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a project for Rotten Tomatoes, and I was watching it again. I'm like, the scene, like, I'm really impressed with the fog work. And also, that movie, what, The Rental? No, what's that movie? The Airbnb movie that came out this year with um, Alison Brie. There's some great fog work in that one, too. But yeah, I mean, maybe that, maybe the production designer, that's his thing. Maybe he's into that kind of stuff. Just He's, he's a fog man. Maybe it also helps with the lighting, right? It helps practically light, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Russell Franklin calls Carter cowboy. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> seems fitting. Uh, although we've, we've, we've got to see Carter wear a hat. Uh, but I like, I just like that he's called him a cowboy. That's nice. Yeah, hey cowboy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and when we get Janice says a naughty word, which she, uh, she calls Susan a stupid bitch. And I may be Fair enough. That. But I like when she does that, because uh, it's, it's after after Susan reveals that they made the sharks smarter. She then Janice then has this look of realization and then cries because she realizes that she's basically called Jim that as well because Jim did the same thing. So I, I like that Whoa. that moment on her face where she like she insults this woman who she doesn't she doesn't like. There's always been animosity between the two of them, and then she's like, oh no, my lover who just died. I just said the same thing about him, and then she cries. I like that bit. Some raw emotion going on there. Yes. Wow. I never even picked up on that. I also think Saffron Burrow's nails, like just saying as a side effect, the sharks got smarter. I mean, you read that on paper, her Shrug. entire speech. It's so silly, but she nailed, I don't know. I think she, like she really pulls that line off and a lot of other, I think actors hands that could be a lot sillier, but she, you see, you see the, um, not earnestness, but she believes what she's saying. Like that's, she pulls off cheesy dialogue pretty well here. Yeah. I mean, they all, they all do. She's great. Samuel L. Jackson is absolutely killing every single line. Um, he's like dialed up to 12. Yeah. I, I, one of his lines didn't quite work for me. It's where he says, um, does anyone else find that a tad bit odd? And I was a like, tad. It's a tad or a bit. Like pick one, but you don't need both. He really, he really hits the tad as well. He really got <laughs> Why does a tad he... bit odd. Um, <laughs> This, uh, everyone is on fire in the scene. Like the acting is incredible. I think. I think this would be a great scene, for, like a, a great group acting class scene. Oh! If you had like four students, you could probably roll the Janice and Scoggins. They have a line each. You can roll that into one person. Uh, but the rest of it, you get good chunks of dialogue for everyone else. And I, I think this would be a good like audition scene or just a group project. Yeah, if you can get hold of enough steam, I think that oh, would. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> just call me up. <laughs> for for deep we see the play. When theatres are opening again, this would be this is the scene to come in for. This is one. I would so watch Deep Blue Sea the play just for the but effects. Would... All right, so the Spider-Man one with you two went huge, right? It was too big and massive. I would love to see what would happen with Deep Blue Sea the play. Like you'd, you'd, oh man, it would have to be more of like a moral dilemma, I guess, than sharks. Uh, shark puppets? Would it be like the Lion King or War Horse? Oh, with hell the yeah. sharks? Yeah, I, I, War Horse. I, I can see that. Because Warhorse, it's, there's only a few horses in Warhorse, and so you only you only read to have three, maybe four shark puppets. You guys, you guys, you guys will know this, but I, I looked at IMDb trivia before coming on, and um, according to them, there's only five minutes of shark action in this film. You only see a total of five minutes of sharks. Is that is that true or is that rubbish? Uh, I think uh, it, I think if you count all the times where there's a fin, it, or there's like there's sharks swimming in the background for quite a few scenes early on. Like the party scene, there's just a shark in the background. Yeah. But I think actual sharks acting, let's mm. say, uh, like in, in focus, then that sounds about right. Five to ten. I wrote an article back in 2018 where I looked at all the time of creature features of m- monsters for Rotten Tomatoes. So I'll look through my uh, history here and see if I can find the time <laughs> of how much sharks are in here. It's got to be more than five minutes. Well, do we count it sitting there? Getting worked on? Oh, th- yeah, that's that's there's like five minutes where it's just there. Does that <laughs> count? Just, it has to. That's that could just be a prop, though. If you're doing the play, that could just be sitting there. So I, I guess moving underwater sharks, that's probably still more than there was in Jaws. Yeah, yeah. 
I want to see some LA schools now doing this scene, pulling that off. This, oh man. Yeah. I see, would there be music? 